Hi, welcome to Real Beer Revolution. My name is Mike, and today we're at the Old Potters Inn in Grayton, brewing the Roynek Amber Ale. So we're here at Old Potters with uh, Trevor, who's owner and honorary brewer, <laughs> part-time brewer. I was going to say full-time brewer. Weekend gentleman brewer. <laughs> so tell me about uh, the story behind Old Potters. You guys have been going a year now. Yeah, we uh, had our birthday, our first birthday in November, uh, end of November, beginning of December. I suppose it's difficult to know when a when a brewery starts or when your relationship with your wife starts, I'm not sure what the uh, <laughs> initiating event is, but for for a brewery, I suppose it's when you the moment of consummation is the license, and that is our uh, that that happened in November. So we've been okay. going for a year, but prior to that, there's always a backstory of three years sitting in licensing offices, uh, yeah. getting pieces of paper from departments of agriculture, farms, and fishery, and uh, as you can imagine, there's a whole long rigmarole to getting a license. Also, this is a, a, an 1850 um, monument here, yes. so that, that in itself, the building took a fair amount of time. So three years prior to that, we'd started, and two years prior to that, we'd bought the property. So in total, it's, you know, the, the story is about a good five, seven years old in, in total. And I think that's the story of every brewery in, in South Africa, a long, lot of thinking, uh, mm. before you eventually see the light of day, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. And um, we're here obviously about the Amber Ale today, the Roynek, so uh, how long did this recipe take to develop? Or? So, so you know, we kind of started playing with it um, uh, a good two years ago and, and okay. started refining it and playing with our, our malts and our, our hops. And then a lot of it is, is serendipitous development. You, you kind of start with a recipe in mind and Certain hops are not available at certain times of the year, as, mm. as are certain malts not available at certain times. And, and so I, I would say it's taken a good um, year and a half, two years to arrive at, at this particular recipe. Yes. We've uh, gone with uh, SAB malts, yeah. very controversially. I know it's not trendy to say you <laughs> like SAB malt, but uh, they're 30 kilometers down the road from us. All of the barley is grown in the surrounding area as you drove in here, Mike. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You would have seen all the barley fields that have just recently been harvested and are going to the malting house in Caledon. So to us, it makes sense to have a local product that's uh, processed locally. And, and we're finding very acceptable extractions. We haven't found any bodies or tractor bits in our malt. We, we haven't had any problems with our milling. So... So we, we're happy with uh, the recipe as we, and, and also we changed our hops quite, quite a lot. We mm. started off with a lot of imported hops, and now we're going predominantly with uh, SAB hops, which we've got a, there's a fantastic service in George from the SAB, AB InBev team that, that give us a tremendous service. And you, and you get a very, it's a very malt forward uh, beer. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of caramel on the nose and yeah, um, we, a little bit of the tropical aromas from, uh, from the passion, from the southern passion, but uh, but it's a very yeah. malt forward beer. Eh? It's, well, we it's, wanted it to be hmm. mainly malty. We've got hmm. four beers. We wanted one to be about the malt, which would be this one. Yes. We wanted one to be about the hops, which would be our IPA. We wanted one to be about the yeast, which is the saison. Hmm. And then we wanted one to be well balanced, the the pale ale. So so yeah, this one we we've we've gone for a very malty, caramelly, toffee wild honey kind of flavor I, I'm, I'm hoping for and you can see the color there as well but it's a fantastic uh red uh for the roy neck and that, that matches <laughs> those bits on your ears there that stick for out sure. in the sun mike <laughs> that name the name actually drew me to this beer to to brew today you know the the roy neck uh, yeah I, I get the roy neck and uh <laughs> but what 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 uh what was the, is there a story behind the name is there a character in particular that uh that drew you to this name? Or? Well, I, mean, I, I think what was, uh, before we got our license, we started uh, serving beer for free. I don't know if that's okay. legal or not. I hope you don't have any SARS guys in your <laughs> viewership. But, uh, but, but uh, as I was serving beers, you know, I was struck by the one being a very kind of balanced pale L, and then the other one was the Saison, which I thought was a peasant beer, and the name Plas Yarpy came to mind. And I thought if we got the Plas Yarpi, then the Pale L must be the antithesis to that, the city slicker. And then when I saw the amber coming out like that, I thought this has to be the Roynek. So it's not like there was a, a particular uh, story as to how that happened. It was no. just to fit in with our range of names. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and you're keeping yourself busy. Obviously, um, brewing's not your only, uh, your only passion or your only uh, uh, line of work. You've well, uh, well, there's got to be something. I think a lot of the brewers in South Africa have got a day job. Uh, yeah. A lot of guys in IT and uh, are funding the 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 the, the kind of uh, uh, the folly through through a day job. And my day job is uh, kidney dialysis. I, I, I treat people with uh, kidney failure and I right. put them on dialysis machines. And uh, I then try and arrange transplants for them and, and and look after them. I don't do the actual transplanting, but I look after them after the transplant and uh, so that that uh, helps pay for a bag of grain here and there <laughs> and, a, and a vacuum packed st- st- bit of hops here and there so yeah pay the bills. that's uh, <laughs> as you say in afrikaans it's nirkis and birkis that's the <laughs> that's the story of my life yeah and um and you've also started off a festival here a beer festival in uh, in grayton um so, so we started the first time was last year yes I turned 50 and I didn't want a birthday party, so I said to my wife, let's just have a little small beer festival, mm-hmm. and we invited a few of our local friends, it was meant to be to highlight brewers in the uh, in the area, um, people like Wernan Clip and uh, old, uh, the Hermanus Brewery, who okay. does the Old Harbour House, and of course uh, Folk and Good, and uh, there's also obviously Eric uh, van Heerden, a trick of, trick of fish. And then I started learning about the others, the Mountain Brewing Company and Red Sky. So, so before we knew it, we had a, little, a few Cape Town brewers that were interested. Uh, Greg Casey from Africa yep. uh, and, and obviously our good friend Steph Visweidel. We can't leave him out of anything. <laughs> and, and so it was mainly meant to focus on the Overberg, but it spread a little bit wider. Okay. I was, I was proud that it was small and intimate. And I was proud that it, the actual brewers were there on the day. They weren't uh, corporate... Uh, People yes. who didn't really know what they're serving, so you yeah. got a you got a brew festival for brewers made by brewers, and, and I, I would like to develop that a little bit more this year. I highlight a lot on the home brewing scene, which is thriving in the Western Cape, yes. Alderberg and yeah. Southeasters. Like them to have a stand. Yeah, I'd like uh, there to be an actual brew on the day, and once again, I want good. the brewers themselves to be there, mm. and and and, dis- and and actually also have a festival beer as well that isn't available anywhere else except at the festival so so when and when and where is so it it's going to be the first saturday of april hopefully okay. every year forever okay um, and in grayton in grayton we, yep. we rent a, a, a hall uh, that's that's a bit bigger than our property that can accommodate 15 20 brewers okay. we'll also have a, a, a gin from uh, our other grayton friends uh, the Bryant brothers who do Six Dogs, mm-hmm. uh, lovely, lovely gin. So we'll have them as well, and some local wineries uh, will be in the area Fantastic. as well. So, so it'll be a little bit of everything, but I wanted to stay mainly beer focused, uh, actually. Perfect. So that's coming seventh of April next year. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks very much, Trevor. Thank you for having us here, and Thank uh, you. let's go and make some beer. Some beer. Thank yeah. you. Cheers. Okay, so here we have the grain bill for a 23 litre batch of the Roynick and we have 3 kilograms of pale malt, 1.5 kilograms of caramel amber malt, 250 grams of caramel Munich 3 and 250 grams of Melodian malt. And here we are doughing in and I like doughing very slowly so I mix a jug in at a time, try and disperse it around the water quite nicely and then give it a really good stir make sure that all the grain is coated with the water. Um, I think this helps efficiency quite a bit. Um, So moving on now, this is towards the end of doughing in. You can see it becomes much more difficult to to dough in at this stage, much more difficult to get the water mixed in with the grain. But um, yeah, if you move the mash pedal around quite a bit, as I'm doing in the video there, then you get some quite good results at the end. So here we are mashing in and it's quite a simple mash schedule on this brew. 68 degrees C for 60 minutes and 77 degrees C mash out for 10 minutes. And we also brewed this on a 50 litre Braumeister system. We simply doubled the recipe for that. So here we are mashing in on the Braumeister. And while that was mashing in, we had a quick look around the brewery. Had some nice beers, enjoyed the Roynek, 
and yeah, just enjoy Greater in general really. There were some fantastic smells coming from inside the brewery this day, so I decided to check out what was actually going on. And they were brewing a Russian Imperial Stout. Really big beer, lots of chocolatey smells in the air. Had to get a good look in there and see what was happening. Okay, so we come back to the end of the mash and we are now mashing out and you can see the beautiful red colour of our wort. Okay, so we lift the mash pipe out from the grandfather um, and as we do that then all the water starts to sparge down through the grain bed and into the boil kettle and then we're going to sparge with some 70 seven degree water and we should sparge very slowly um, it's nice to to disperse that water all over the top of that plate there um, and those stainless steel marks you don't want to get water above those marks so sparge in with water and then let it drop down and here we are lifting the grain out of the Braumeister um, it's definitely a two-hand job on this system it's a 50 litre system, so it's much heavier. You would expect it to be much more difficult. Um, but yeah, there it is. Out and sparging away. So we sparge in exactly the same way on this, um, pouring water over that mesh um, so that it cleans the grains nicely. Okay, so now this kettle is up to the boil and you can see there was quite a bit of foam on the top from the protein. So I like to just stir all that foam back into the kettle before I start my time. So there I am stirring it all back in. And our first hop addition, 60 minute hop addition, is 16 and a half grams of Africa Queen. If you can't get hold of Africa Queen, you could substitute with Polaris at this stage. And um, we'll give that a good stir, give the hops a good stir into the wort. Um, make sure they're all mixed in quite nicely. And I just like to give the bottom of the kettle a quick scrape at this stage as well to stop any build up on the bottom. And once that's done, we're going to start our 60 minute timer on the grandfather. And here we are, adding double the amount of hops into the Braumeister. Okay, so with 10 minutes left to the boil, we're going to add 10 grams of Cascade. Make sure we get them all in there. And again, we want to give them a really good stir. I'll get the bottom of the uh, kettle another scrape at this point. Okay, there's only one minute to go now, and we're going to throw in a whole 22 grams of Southern Passion. And these are aroma hops, so we're going to give them a nice stir in. I did a bit of a mini whirlpool at this stage just to make sure that they were all amalgamated nicely in there. And I get the bottom a bit of a scrape again as well. And now the time is up and the heater is off. So we're going to do a five minute whirlpool on this. It's hard work, but it really does help. So 
So we do this for five minutes and then we let it rest for five minutes before we start pumping the water through the counterflow chiller and into the fermentation bucket. And that's it. We're going to throw in our yeast. We used USO5 on this recipe. And we're going to let it ferment away at 18 degrees. It really is as simple as that. Thanks very much for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. We had a great time in Grayton at the Old Potters Inn. Um, and if you did enjoy it, please do give us a like and a share. Um, check, us out, check out our website, realbeerrevolution.co.za and you can find us on most social medias at Real Beer Revolution. Until next time.